uh, a very good afternoon to one and all uh, today we are going to have on this topic artificial intelligence and machine learning so let's a uh, brief introduction about me uh, as sachin sir said uh, myself dr vikas tada professor and coordinator of computer science and engineering in ambedkar school of engineering and technology at amit university i have done my b then tech and then phd uh, i got uh, almost uh, more than 20 years experience in engineering education research and and professional uh, awards uh, best award so let's start with uh, ai or uh, artificial intelligence you know the, some of the movies, uh, if you are a fan of good movies we do most of terminators and the uh, transformer series so all of these movies you know what they are you know um, they are human beings they are machine but they look like human okay. so they are intelligent is a question of software okay. क्लासीफिकेशन ऑफ टास्क विच कैन टेक डिसीजन okay on the basis of certain actions so uh, a very famous test you know uh, which is still not uh, solved by the computer scientist okay this is very much of turing because ai has progressed so far okay uh, right from the 1950s to 2000 okay so this is a very simple test okay but no one has made a system so that it can pass the test on the test okay there is a human interrogator which is asking you know number of questions and there is a kind of wall okay this behind between the interrogator and the human and the ai system the interrogator cannot figure out when he is asking some question who is you know uh, given by the human or ai system but at some points the human interrogator can easily come to know ki yes it is given by the machine and or given by the human so during test means you have to design an ai system so that the human interrogator cannot figure out ki whether the answer is given by the human or by some ai machine okay this, you can see a lot of kind of this system are available which are known as the chatbots okay so before i move on to next slide uh, please take a small poll uh, which is simple question artificial intelligence and machine learning are just synonyms of each other this is just to check whether how much you know about this two terminologies okay, so you can see so see this and we'll see the answer okay uh, the correct answer is uh, false artificial intelligence is a different thing machine learning is a different thing but machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence you cannot say both are synonyms of each other okay what exactly is the meaning of machine learning okay machine learning if you simply see is the learning of machine and how we make machine to learn okay so there are number of definitions how it will be there you see machine learning is the science of programming computers so that they can learn from data a lot of data we provide to the machines and they can learn from that how they learn from that we'll see in a short while okay then uh, arthur samuel you see this definition was given in 1959 is a field of study that gives computers the ability without being explicitly programmed It means we are not programming the computers but we the way we learn okay right from beginning right from our childhood right from our birth uh, to the you know play school then the school then college level we keep learning okay not from school but from our environment also then uh, a very good definition which i'll be using in uh, explaining one of the example so that uh, you can say a computer program is said to learn from experience e it means you'll be having some experience e 
and doing a particular task for example if you are playing a chess for the first time okay so you are not have any experience but if you play chess number of times okay so you'll get some experience in playing chess then how well you are performing in chess it means let's like, say if you are winning uh, in first round second round some kind of thing okay by some good marks uh, some points okay so you can say the performance will be there then you'll be having some task so how well you can do a particular task having some experience and your performance will be measured through p okay so this is a very good definition uh, which will be using in understanding the concept of machine learning with an example okay now uh, when you hear machine learning you hear a lot of terminology also which is uh, the ai okay then the machine learning then you also have the concept of deep learning and you also hear data science okay there's so many things but you don't have to have a confusion among all of these we can see here ai is in the outer circle okay so ai is your main main set okay so ai is behind the machine learning and the deep learning okay now ai has been there okay it was there since i remember from 1940s 1950s but it was not so popular it was a kind of you know simply uh textbooks or part of a robotics but nowadays uh, it's so much popular okay from the past 10 to 15 years it's become so much popular so you can see here ai is the main outer circle then you can see machine learning is a subset of the ai okay it means you must have the knowledge of the basic concept of ai to be efficient with machine learning again a deeper part of machine learning is known as deep learning where we make use of uh, artificial neural networks which i'll give you uh, towards the end of this webinar and you can see the data science is you know uh, combining all three small circles together it means data science is somehow related with the concepts of this in data science we have a lot of data and we try to explore the data we try to do the prediction uh, using the concept of machine learning statistics uh, mathematics and uh, the data mining okay so i'll give you a brief idea of this uh, uh, later on but this is a very 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 small idea uh, so you can get it yes what is data science what is deep learning what is the relation between all these things? okay now when we talk about machine learning uh, it's always about you know uh, predicting future because when we are learning uh, and giving this data or whatever examples to machine and machine has become uh, you know uh, intelligent the way a human thinks and predicts so it's all about you know predicting the future so just look at over here small example we'll be having today today means whatever information you are having you are just simply feeding to the machine okay now i simply give an example let's say your class teacher is given you uh, a set of questions 20 questions of mathematics and those 20 questions say, she has given you to solve now what what say so you uh, some of the questions you have solved but some of them uh, you aren't able to solve so what she did uh, she solved all those 20 questions in the class okay then what she did she also kept aside 10 questions okay so that once you have solved or once she has solved all those questions into the class then she can give you those 10 questions so that she can check ki how much uh, you understood the concepts so same over here you can assume that this is a set of 20 questions this is a set of 10 questions so you are simply training it on to those 20 questions okay once you are trained this part so this once you have trained it means a model is created now we are ready to ask you some questions which are not part of the original 20 questions so this green part which is just 10 questions she can give you okay so this is a kind of test okay once you have solved your 20 questions so once this is given to you okay it means if you can perform goes over here it means what this is a kind of prediction it means how much you have learned we are just checking over here and on the basis of this i can give you some questions if you answer that questions well it means yes you can work on some unseen data okay so this is a basic idea of where how the machine learning works obviously i'll be giving you more example okay so let's see what happens in exactly the basic terminology of machine learning so you have a labeled data okay what is the meaning of labeled data labeled data means uh, for example i can give you a picture of cat 
and I can also tell okay, it is a picture of cat. So a picture is simply a picture, and if along with the picture I'm writing it's cat picture, then the picture of dog, and also I'm writing it's a dog picture like this. So I can have so many pictures of cats and dogs, and along with every picture I'm writing this. Yes, this is the uh, label. Label means it's a dog picture, it's a cat's picture. So what I can do, I can simply give this whole label data to my machine learning algorithm and my machine learning algorithm can learn just by looking at the pictures of dog and the associated label and once it has learned so we say we are having some learned model now once it is learned what i can give you i can give give this model some random pictures of cats and dogs okay and the model can tell you whether the picture which you have given it it's a picture of dog or it's a picture of cat now how much uh, Correct prediction it can do. So we'll see. We'll we'll find out that what is the accuracy. For example, I've given a picture of cat, but the model is saying it's a picture of dog. So it's an error. So we find out that how many examples I've given him, how many it had classified correctly, or how many classified it wrongly. Okay. So we can have different kinds of algorithms uh, for uh, machine learning. And we can have predictions in the terms of classification. We can have prediction in the terms of regression. We'll see all those, okay? Let's say again, uh, to continue with the same example, I have pictures of, let's say the Bruno, it's my dog, let's say Kitty. I can have so many pictures of these two, okay? Then what I can do, I can you know give a lot of examples of this to the machine learning model. So it means what I'm trying to build up a model on the basis of a lot of examples which I'm passing it to. Okay. Now once it is learned, okay, how it learns, you can see from the single image, it can have the portion of the image, it can find the patterns, okay, this particular pattern belongs to the image of a dog. Similarly, particular patterns it can have uh, within the cat image and the model can learn. Okay, now I'm not going much detail because that's beyond the scope of this webinar. But this is how uh, the model can learn and once it has learned, what are you gonna do? He gonna when supplying uh, images, so it can simply tell yes, this is the image of a dog or this is the image of a kitty. So you can see that I have written one single line over here. This is supervised learning. So when you are uh, uh, letting machine to learn by providing labels examples, okay, it is known as supervised learning. Supervised learning is not at all, you know, uh, done under someone's supervision. Please don't have this uh, concept in your mind. Supervised learning means simply you are having label examples, you are passing to machine, and on the basis of label examples, the machine can, you know, uh, able to classify once it is learned. Yes, given a picture, it's a picture of dog or it's a picture of a cat. So this is known as simply supervised learning. Okay, for example, a lot of uh, you uh, who uses mail, okay, let's say most of you using the Gmail, and you see there's a spam folder, okay, it means there are some of the mail uh, automatically goes into the spam folder, and those are the mails where, you know, uh, we do not want, even the, the Google mail provider automatically recognizes that this is a mail which is not good for you, it means kind of promotional mail, you know, kind of, you know, uh, lottery mails kind of things. So this is an example of machine learning where uh, a program has been written to identify that a given a mail, it is a spam mail or ham. Ham means non-spam. So if you apply that uh, one of the definition of the machine learning which we saw earlier, it means task is to identify the spam emails. Okay, most of the spam mails may be uh, having viruses also. So what is the performance? It means uh, we have given you a number of examples of uh, emails uh, which are spam and which are non-spam. And on the basis of this, you know, uh, what you can do, we can simply check okay, how many uh, mails you identify correctly and how, how many mails uh, you did not classify correctly. So experience means uh, the database of emails that were labeled by users. So many emails uh, you can have. So this task is done by you know uh, just looking some of the words like say lottery promotion you know uh, please join this group or uh, let's say uh, mails which are getting from the uh, various uh, courses which you will have to join please join our courses something like this 
Okay. Now, uh, if you've done a little bit programming uh, of computers uh, using C, C++, or any other programming languages, so you can see this. This is a traditional programming model where you have data, you write a program, you supply it to the computer, and what you get, you get an output. So this is a model of traditional programming. Now see what happens in machine learning. In machine learning, you are supplying the data. Data is the labeled example. So the output is the label, data is that example. So when you supply data and output, the computer try to learn from this given data and the output. And what you get? You get a program. A program you can use later on for prediction purpose. So this is the main difference between traditional programming and the machine learning. Okay. So time is to have the second poll question. So the reason for widespread of ML and DL, DL is deep learning is because of availability of lots of data. See, these terms are there maybe, you know, 20, 25 years ago, maybe 50 years ago. But nowadays, you can hear a lot of things about machine learning, deep learning. So why they are so popular nowadays? So the first, availability of lots of data, high computational resources, and both. Okay, so I give you just 10 seconds uh, to see what can be the correct answer of this question. Then I'll tell you what is the correct answer. Okay, uh, the correct answer is both because nowadays uh, we have lots of data available. Okay, a lot of data is being generated from the mobile phones, from the emails, from the Twitter, from the YouTube, you know, so many things. I'll cover, I'll show you uh, how much data is generated in just one minute, you know, on the internet. Then nowadays, you know, earlier, uh, if I remember, uh, I had my first PC uh, having just 10 GB of RAM and uh, 256 MB, two, 10 GB of hard disk and just 256 MB of RAM. Now you just can't find 250 MB of RAM nowadays. And we have worked on 1.44 you know, uh, inch floppy disk. So nowadays you can see we have, have pen drives, you know, worth of 64 GB. Uh, we have SSD, uh, solid state drives. So availability of a lot of data and availability of a lot of high computational resources. We have, you know, graphic cards, which can uh, have multiple cores so that you can execute your data uh, within seconds, within fraction of seconds. So because of these two points, uh, there's a wide spread of machine learning and the deep learning. Okay. Now, uh, let me see, uh, I discussed the concept of traditional approach. So you have a simple problem when you want to solve a problem using computers. So you can have the, you know, kind of if else conditions, or loops or uh, functions. So you can write rules and you can simply, uh, the rules are evaluated and the program you can launch. In case some errors are there, you can see those errors. You can again study the problem. Again, you can modify the rules. And this is how your traditional approach works. But in the case of machine learning, what happens? You have a machine learning algorithm which you train, okay, using lots of data, okay. Then you find out a solution. In case some error is there, you know, again you can study the problem. You can again retrain. You can change the machine learning algorithm by having lots of data, and you can launch the that particular model which can predict. Okay, fine. Let's see uh, more examples where uh, the machine learning models learn by examples. Let's say audio signals. Everyone, I think you are aware about, you know, the Alexa, or the Amazon device, and the Google Assistant, which you use your voice for searching on the Google. Even most of you having iPhones, so you can make use of Siri. So again, it's an example of machine learning uh, of. Uh, Again, a subset is natural language processing, where the language which we speak, like which I'm speaking to you, and you're listening that. So what if uh, a machine speaks to you, or you speak to a machine, and machine can identify? So the machine is learned, OK? A uh, lot of lot of you know words of English are spoken so that the machine can understand all those words. And it can correctly you know, figure out what should be the meaning of the particular sentence. So a lot of audio signals can be there so that uh, the machine can learn. So again, you can see, I told you the set of labeled examples is the training data. Fine. Then uh, what is the meaning of generalize over here? When you say generalize, it means what? Once I've trained you, okay, once I've trained you, given a lot of examples. But when I'm speaking something, you know, a text which I'm not able to understand, 
okay it means not able to generalize it's like that when i have given you 20 questions 30 questions your ma'am has solved all those 30 questions in the class and one i'm giving you one or two simple question a little bit tricky questions you're not able to identify it means what your performance is not good you need to again work on those pitfalls where you're committing errors in solving the new problems so that's the meaning of generalization fine you can see uh, i uh, told you the example uh, where you try to find out okay, whether the mail is a spam mail or a ham mail then you know when you are clicking on the search pages when you're doing google internet okay so the at various places you are clicking what kinds of ad you are clicking what kinds of things you are you know uh, visiting what kind of text you are surfing what kind of blogs you are you know uh, reading everything you know is part of machine learning they can have a lot of data from about you because once you have logged in into the google account they can have each and every information about you and they can recommend you okay, these are the products which you should buy these are the you know books which you should purchase these are the new articles which you should read then uh, uh this is a travel s car so it is purely an example of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning because it has been trained onto the GPS, onto the images, onto the surrounding environment. It has a lot of sensors from which you can take data, you know. So it's all examples of machine learning models. Then there's a complete process, okay. I won't uh, tell you much about it, but simply you can say data is collected over here, then data is prepared because the data cleaning, where data is cleaned, it means, for example, you are a uh, removing the stop words like the is you are uh, removing entries which are not mentioned like say marks are not mentioned age is not mentioned okay then uh, which algorithm you should apply so what you can have you can do the exploratory data analysis okay so that you can have a look at the data by visualizing it okay and you can see uh, what is the mean what is the mode what is the median you know uh, stats uh, question you can ask over here then you can apply a machine learning algorithms over here like uh, you can have a classification prediction models clustering you can see uh, what kind of uh, normal graph is uh, visible from the data okay again after that there are a lot of you know uh, techniques for visualization that uh, how a graph look like then these are the receiver operating characteristic graph okay so these are simply graph again this is a uh, lot of softwares are there which they provide dashboard where having just click and use the you know functions so these are the basic steps when you do a machine learning task okay. you see a lot of applications these are just very few examples but because of the you know uh, widespread of the deep learning there are many many good applications but you see spam filtering which we just discussed the uh, credit card fraud detection recognition of you know digits on the tags or zip codes and detecting Faces and images when you you know try to have a picture from your mobile phone or your selfie you see a rectangle comes around your face so it's an example of uh, computer vision okay where you try to have recognize them faces again you can group can be uh, recognized then MRI image analysis like medical removes uh, uh, resonance imaging the recommendation systems uh, based on what you purchase from Amazon or Flipkart or some other you know uh, e-commerce site uh, based on your past purchase they recommend you that you should purchase these type of systems or these type of you know items and search engines uh, your google's your bing you know many other search engines they again make use of you know machine learning handwriting recognition most of the android phones you know comes with some uh, software is built in your case okay, so you can just make a you know shape onto the front screen of your android phones you know let's say you can have a command if you just write C, okay it's so our camera will open if you just write w whatsapp will open so this is all about you know handwriting uh, recognition then scene classification in a particular image uh, one can easily identify key it's a natural scenery or the scene of a market it's a picture of a cricket match you know it's a kind of you know person you know standing in front of system so there are a lot of examples where machine learning is applicable now machine learning is uh, not a single field it's an interdisciplinary field you know any person having you know any such stats visualization economics databases signal processing you know engineering is in part of every engineering you know field 
biology, a lot of uh, machine learning applications are being applied in biology. So it's not like that, you know, that only the BTEC uh, in machine learning or BTEC is done engineering, you know, can go for ML. A lot of math people are going about ML, you know. And again, uh, the main three classification of machine learning is the supervised learning, where I, the first example which I gave you earlier was the example of supervised learning, which is the most common. If I someone uh, explains you machine learning, it will always talk about the supervised learning first. Then in unsupervised learning, what we do, we simply have, you know, patterns. We simply have, we don't have any labeled examples. I'll cover this in a short while. Then you have reinforcement learning or reinforcement learning. Okay, it means where the agent is there, uh, which is simply rewarded for correct action and punished for bad action. So one example is, you know, learn to play chess by winning or by losing. What kind of, you know, moves you are doing in chess so that you can win. So on every correct move, you will be rewarded. There's a lot of algorithms in uh, machine learning, you know, field or deep learning field. So again, I just uh, talked about uh, supervised learning with the example of this. But let me uh, you know, give you more idea about classification and regression. Classification, the first example which we talked about where we try to classify the images of the dog and the cat. It's an example of classification. For example, uh, let's take one more example. Let's say I have uh, other than the pictures of cat and dog. Let's say I have a picture of cat, dog and a bird. OK, so I have uh, three different classes. I can also have, let's say, depending upon uh, what kind of tweets are, you know, being uh, written uh, or being, you know, pasted onto the Twitter, so that the person thinks uh, it's a positive tweet or it's a negative tweet. So I can have a sentiment analysis. Okay. So in the classification, we simply try to classify uh, the target classes. For example, uh, you can also have <clears throat> the classification on the basis of features. So that the person is suffering from the cancer or not, the person is suffering from the diabetes or not. Okay, so we'll have simple uh, values which we call as discrete values. For example, we can say zero means person is not suffering from cancer. One means person is suffering from cancer. So just two classes are there. We just need to classify. And when we talk about regression, uh, which I have not discussed, I'll be discussing it soon. So regression means, uh, so let's say, the, on the basis of the uh, hours of study you are you have done in uh, before your exam okay let's say some student has done say two hour study some has done four hour study so how the marks are you know predicted for example a person has done two hours of study say he has got let's say uh, 50 marks let's say four hour study let's say 60 marks or say eight or nine hours of study let's say he got 90 plus marks okay so on the basis of the marks the hours of studied we can predict that how much marks the student can score so it's a kind of regression okay stock market prediction uh what will be the temperature next day how much rain it would be there depending upon the past you know data which we were having so we can predict depending upon you know how much uh score a batsman has done in cricket match so we can predict yes what should be the uh score in the next match so this is the regression uh task so surprise machine learning is all about classification and the regression you can see we have discussed this it's an example of classification of uh, email you know spam email uh, classification now again uh, a time for a poll question so it's a good question let's see this so what i'm asking you i'm just asking that learning to predict student responses in future webinar based on responses in my previously conducted webinar okay so this is my webinar say uh, i get some response from this I'll be conducting many more uh, webinars. So after, let's say, 10 or 20 webinars I have conducted. And uh, so I just want to help you what should be the response in my 21st webinar. So could you please tell me uh, it's an example of classification or regression? I'll give you just 10 seconds. Okay, now uh, it will be a regression problem because let's say, uh, assuming uh, I've been uh, getting, you know, out of five uh, points, I'm getting four, 4.5, something 4.7 kind of, you know, points. 
So on the basis of that, I can simply have that for fun for first webinar I got say 4.4 for second webinar I got let's say 4.0 and so kind of score out of five. Okay, so I'll be simply scoring uh, predicting a particular score in my come upcoming or future webinars. So I'm not classifying my webinars. So it's an example of regression. Fine. Now let's uh, go deeper into uh, how exactly is the machine learning task or supervised learning task works. So let's say I have an example of uh, four different fruits. Okay, this is one apple. This is also apple, but a two different kinds of apple. And I also have this a lemon and an orange. Okay. So what I'm, do, I'm doing, I'm simply having the features uh, in the form of these fruits, their height, their length, their mass. So out of uh, this data given, I need to simply tell key whether given input data, it's a, it's an apple, it's a lemon, or it's a different kind of apple, it's an orange. So this will be a kind of classification task where I have four different classes. Okay. So what I can do, I can simply have a machine learning model where I'll be supplying the features. Okay, the features will be, I told you, it will be the fruit length, uh, fruit mass, or fruit width, or you can also take into account the color of the fruit. On the basis of that, I'll be training my machine learning model so that it can predict whether it's a apple, orange, lemon, or some other apple. Okay, so you can see these are the features which I'll be using. You can have mass of the apple, you can have the height of the apple, you know, color and the width. And you can see this. So on the basis of this, it, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to predict whether it's a apple or some other fruit. So this is how you have features which you pass as input and these are the labels. Okay. So you can see more about it. This is how we have, because you may have number of training examples. You can see there's a table over here. Okay, so, so you can see the first line means my first training example. It is very much similar to the you know, kind of 20 questions which I talked earlier. That your ma'am is you know trying to solve the first question, then ma'am is trying to solve the second question, you know, and these are the correct answers of the you know your questions. So all these data, all this data, you know, is passed. So out of this data, because uh, I told you earlier, your ma'am gave you 20 questions, and after she has solved all those 20 questions, you are trying to uh, she has then given you 10 questions, which you should try yourself. So this is kind of split, you know, onto the training data, which ma'am has given you and after she's asking you. So you have training data as well as you are having testing data. Fine. So now let's have a concept of linear regression. Okay. Uh, linear is important because there's a linear relationship, x to the power 1. When you have x to the power 2, 3 or more, uh, it's not linear regression. It will be the polynomial regression okay so see this is a house okay uh, it's not my house okay i don't want to sell it but let's see this is my house i want to find out what should be the price of my house okay so uh, how can i find out what should be the price of my house okay so what i can do i can simply look at the recent sales in my neighborhood fine uh, so i simply find out okay in my neighborhood in my colony or in my sector uh, what were the prices okay for which the houses were sold fine or this is one uh, such uh, idea I can get, but what are the other ideas I can get? The other ideas I should know okay, before I'm going to list my, uh, or what particular amount I can get for my house when I'm going to sell my house. So they can simply ask you, okay, what is the area of your house? How many, how many square feet area you are having? Okay, uh, where is the, where your house is located? Okay, means what is the locality of your house? And how many bedrooms you are having in your house? It's a simplex, it's a duplex. How many bathrooms you are having? Okay, it's an independent house or a flat. So, so many things, you know, people can ask me before they want to go for my uh, house. Okay, so all these uh, things which I've just uh, talked about, okay, these are known as the feature for the house. And on the basis of all these features, what I want to do, I simply want to predict to what should be the price of my house okay so here just give one idea only i just talk about the one feature that is the area of the house okay maybe let's say 2000 square feet uh, 3000 square feet maybe just 1500 square feet okay so what i can do i can simply have a set i can simply have a graph like this okay so onto this onto this y-axis i can have 
the value of the house onto this x axis i can just have the area of the house in square feet okay i can simply draw a graph like this okay and what i can do i can have some algorithm and given this thing this uh, area of the house and the uh, y value okay what i can do i can simply have prediction for my new instance once it is learned so on the basis of this learned data i can the algorithm can tell me yes this should be the price of my house just on one single input data fine and these are the algorithms okay uh, which can be used for the machine learning okay don't have to worry about it but uh, these are the algorithms and you can see the idea of the unsupervised learning where we do not have any you know uh, examples which is labeled for example uh, as you are listening to my webinar okay i do not have any idea what kind of audience is listening to my sem seminar or webinar now if i want to categorize on the basis of just uh, the kind of thing whether you like my seminar webinar or not okay uh, what kind of interest you are having uh do you want to go for the machine learning do you want to go for cyber security or you want to go to simply btech okay so what i can do i can make a cluster of yours no information is given but i'll be simply asking you different kind of information from you and on the basis of that you know what i can do i can have different clusters of different uh, students okay so that is known as a clustering and it is a part of unsupervised learning where you do not have given any label data you just have given some persons or some input and without any label so what you can do you can simply categorize them okay so this is the idea of unsupervised learning and clustering is one such example of unsupervised learning and you can see uh, one more example over here what you can do you simply pass you know a number of animal pictures to a, a machine learning algorithms and on the basis of different features on the basis of color on the basis of size on the basis of shape the machine learning model can identify you are not giving them in the beginning yes this is a picture of cat this is a picture of dog and so on fine so this is an example of unsupervised learning then uh next example is the reinforcement learning where okay i just give an example okay let's say in your childhood even maybe nowadays it is possible that when you do something good okay you get some achievement you know you are rewarded let's say you have done your uh test uh, correctly you know you got good marks you simply bring your marks you tell your mama or papa yes so this simply reward you then give a chocolate or something else you know and then give you a hug but let's say we're doing something wrong you are punished okay so what's actually over happening over here depending upon your actions you are rewarded or you are punished now when you are reward being rewarded it means you are doing good or you are doing doing in good direction but you are punished it means you have to learn from the mistakes so reinforcement learning is all about you know learning from your action and taking uh those actions so that you can you can reach to a uh, main stage which is the final stage so you can see this a kind of robot is there if you're doing some mistake in teaching the robot can tell you you know this is a kind of mistake uh you should correct this mistake or you have done good we can give you a loss for you fine so in reinforcement learning you are simply having a agent who is taking actions on the basis of what kind of rewards he is getting okay if is doing taking good action he is being rewarded or he is taking wrong action you know he is punished so on the basis of this he is trying to learn one example i give you you see this this is a study or uh, an algorithm being developed uh, by the google in real time you can see this is a, a kind of you know an agent is there in reinforcement learning so in real time you know uh, the just by putting uh, this rectangles around these pictures with accuracy you can see with 88% accuracy with 84% accuracy it's a kite you know kite kite like this the software is predicting yes these are the images of these particular objects so in case in the beginning these percentage is quite low maybe this is just 2% accuracy it's a kind of punishment okay so again it was trained trained and trained so that it was learning it was being rewarded okay so this is a excellent example of reinforcement learning which google has done uh, in 2017 okay then uh, how the classification is done in supervised learning okay uh, let me have a little bit more about it quickly <clears throat> so if these are the first two examples these are the negative examples okay what we can do we can simply have a line which can classify these two okay so we simply have a decision boundary 
It means any future example which is above this line will be classified as positive, below this line will be negative. Okay. So you can have a linear boundary. Sometimes you can will not have linear boundary. Sometimes you have three classes. This is a multi-class classification. It is a two-class classification, which is also known as binary classification. Okay. And sometimes you can have non-linear classification. You can have this kind of data. So you need to have a complex algorithms so that you can have a 3D shape. You know, just uh, and you can have separation of this blue dots with the red dots. Okay. When you have regression, you simply want to draw a line like this, this case, this green line or this line, so that you can simply fit these data onto this line. Fitting means this line is actually predicting these points correctly because in the beginning we do not know what is the relation between the assume this feature is the area of the house and this is the value of the house. Fine. So you do not know what is the relation. You try to find a relation between the area of the house and the value. So you can have this kind of you know a line uh, which you are studying in your uh, math uh, if you are from math background y equal to mx plus c so only x is given y is given you need to find out what is the slope what is the coefficient okay uh, then uh, i just leave it over here because it's kind of then you i can have the now see this when you are having the machine learning algorithm okay uh, how do you simply uh, check whether it's predicting correct or not okay so we have the you know matrices so if let's say the picture actual label picture of the uh, dog was there and your machine learning model simply predicted key, yes it's a picture of a dog okay doesn't mean positive means picture of a dog negative means picture of a cat okay so when your actual was dog your machine predicted its dog so we call it as a true positive okay now it was not a picture of dog Machine also said not a picture of dog, we call it true negative. In two other cases, we simply make a error. It's a simple example. Take this picture, okay, which we call false positive. The doctor is saying you are pregnant. It means whatever the doctor is saying is false. Okay, now you are not pregnant, so it's a negative thing. But again, if she is saying negative, again it's false but though she is pregnant fine so these false positive and type uh, false negative are the errors which we have in machine learning when we try to check how accurate is our machine learning model okay and there are many more uh, matrices fine so you can see this uh, you have the accuracy concept we are simply true positive true negative divided by some of this so it will tell you the accuracy okay then you have the concept of precision, true positive divided by true positive plus false positive, this value. This will simply tell you the percentage of positive predictions that are correct. Similarly, we have others. Okay. So, uh, hope uh, you have understood the concept of uh, this AI machine learning that uh, I wrap up within two, three slides. Now, let's see, these are the big companies, okay, which are uh, doing a lot of uh, research in machine learning and which are you know using it extensively facebook microsoft google ibm yahoo baidu is a chinese company nvidia because most of the graphics card which you use in your uh, computers okay these are nvidia graphics card mainly they have developed graphics card for doing deep learning and machine learning then you can see the many more companies okay many more i'm missing but see these are the companies which market is very hot you know in machine learning and deep learning then uh, let's say just last exam because there's too much okay and uh, time is running short. So what I'm doing, I'm just asking just one simple question. This poll, what do you think approximately how many searches were made through Google in the year 2019 in just one minute? See, just one minute I'm talking about. Okay, so what do you think? And just one minute, one million is 10 lakh. Okay, now let's see this answer correct. You can see this is a simple image. This is this is what happens in one minute on the internet in 2019. You can see one million logging just one single minute all around the world. 4.5 million videos viewed in just one single minute. So you can see a lot of data is being generated from all of these apps. Maybe one of some of the apps are not used over here. 
okay so this is all because of this we have a lot of you know uh, research you know and a lot of you know matter is available on about deep learning machine learning a lot of jobs are created okay so without taking you much further about all these things uh, let me tell you about the careers careers you can see you can have ai engineer you can have business intelligence developer you know machine learning researchers machine learning engineer data mining analysis nlp engineer data scientist machine learning trainer okay and you can see no they are responsible for building and managing platforms so machine learning projects must be an ai programmer should have the solid knowledge of ai okay i should have the handle large data sets we been having 10000 entries uh, 10 lakhs entries you know or let's say a lot of data about the users who view the video on youtube a lot of data about the let's say all eight is subscribed about the in the ncr region there will be huge number okay so predicting okay, whether they will be moving to zero or not you know this can be done then this is the average annual salary okay then so you will be having a data scientist role okay then uh, i'm not discussing all these things uh, it was too uh, tricky and too technical but you can have the data scientist you can see this is the average salary then you can be business intelligence developer mostly in the case of uh, uh, this mba field this is the annual average salary and as a certain a scientist you know uh, after doing this big tech and tech you can go be a junior researcher fellow or you can do phd okay then big data uh, you can have knowledge of big data hadoop big five you know then you can see this highest salary 1 lakh 51000 Three seven dollar per year. Okay. Other than this, just you know, mean uh, classification uh, done by the industry. But once to be, uh, once you enter into this, after having enough experience into this, you can have any role in this. You so you do not go okay for this particular role. Uh, these are simply the references which are used. And uh, thank you. Any queries? Thank you, sir, for the wonderful webinar. Uh, I have received a query. Uh, Mm. that can we do bca in artificial intelligence uh, and machine learning see right now we do not have any course uh, for bca we only have courses for uh, in btech and mtech but, but though it, we, are, it, we are planning we are planning viable to, to do bca in uh, artificial intelligence machine learning will the career prospect will be that much great uh, even if uh, it is there in bca so listen i told you uh, earlier uh, in this uh, machine learning is the interdisciplinary field uh, if you google it okay there are a num number of companies you know who are just giving you a one year diploma course given the simple course of one year two year so it's all required it doesn't matter about what what kind of degree you are having it's all required that how much knowledge you are having so it's why well you can yes you can go for that okay uh, can you please suggest a book for ai and ml which can know yeah, it's, it's 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 very easy okay uh, there are a lot of books available fine but the one simple book uh, i'll be recommending that uh, machine learning uh, with python okay it's by arduino uh, andrino muli and it's available uh, onto the google and i just tell you if you really want to do uh, some machine learning task simply go to coursera uh, there's a course which is free okay uh, because that's the same course which i did 5 or 6 years ago when i you know dive into this machine learning field it's by andrew ng uh, my suggest that uh, after doing bca uh, you should do uh, post graduation like uh, this mca okay or you should do some technical course so that your job opportunities for bc opens up like you can do a course of say one year from any good institute about machine learning or cyber security or blockchain okay but Uh, if you are confident ki yes just after doing bca uh, you can get a good job so chances are uh, 50 50 so uh, i think uh, ishan um, the answer is ki you should do post graduation uh, after bca and hmm. just to make you aware about uh, now act has approved two years of uh, mca course so if, hmm. if you are planning for bca then you should plan for yes. mca yes 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 correct so, right sir uh, thank you so much uh, for your uh, time sir uh, dear uh, participants we have opened a poll you are kindly requested to attend to the poll uh, further uh, we have more webinars lined up so stay tuned to our facebook pages uh, on monday we have a webinar on crash course for nata how to prepare for nata 
uh, there is a crash course that we are providing uh, this is absolutely free so i would request to you to please uh, tune to our facebook page and register uh, i have opened the thank poll thank you thank you for all the participants you know for listening me patiently sir in the meanwhile can i request you to conclude the session uh, with your final remarks uh, what a student uh, should plan in his college uh, when he is choosing for btech iot or machine learning how he should be successful what all things he should plan for okay alison if you are really interested in taking this course okay of machine learning uh, want to have a btech in uh, aiml i see i simply tell you that please go please go for a lot of free courses about ai well even uh, amity future academy you know amity future academy uh, is giving uh, free courses about machine learning and block technology cyber security you can join that courses i told you that courses or uh, which uh, you know on coursera uh, that machine learning course is free fine then you can start reading a uh, lot of free courses uh, given by the even google itself you can search for good books okay you know plenty of videos are there available uh, on youtube okay so just see what is machine learning how to do we start beginning start learning python start learning python because python and python or r programming whatever uh, feels good to you but i suggest python okay because whatever i just talked about over here is that can easily be implemented in python okay so just start learning python and see how uh, you can use python for machine learning and the more practical you do more you are going to understand okay this is the thing